So one of the questions you've all been asking me a lot is, what do I look for in an assistant and how do I find them? Now I've had real problems finding assistants in the past because I live in a small area. There's not many people who are full-time assistants. You're kind of looking for a photographer who will assist. Now, before we go into what I look for, let's go into what I don't look for. Because I get so many messages about people wanting to assist. I don't look for people who want to learn on the job. I don't look for people who think it's a good learning opportunity for them because when I'm talking about my photography rather than my YouTube, it's my career, it's my business. All that matters to me is that I get the job done. I don't want to teach people. I don't want people to be learning on the job. I want someone to hit the ground running and to be able to do the job that they're required to do. I don't want people working for free. I pay a very good rate for an assistant. I pay slightly higher than the average in London, which is a lot higher than the average in Leicester and I expect a lot from it. Some may say too much, but I have high standards in my professional work. Now, finding an assistant's tough. It's a thankless task. I've been an assistant in the past. I'd thoroughly recommend it, but one of the things you have to do is just let go of all of your wants and needs. Your only task on the day is to make the photographer's life easier. It's not to have ideas. It's not to solve problems. It's to make their life easier. One of the worst things that assistants do is speak up during a shoot. Often if I'm not doing something, there's a reason why, but if they suggest it, the client might then want to do it. And it becomes this huge palaver where I've now got to explain to them why we're not doing it and that it is a good idea, but we're just not doing it today because of whatever reason it may be. So what do I look for? So the first thing, which is key to me, is punctuality. I expect my assistant to be there if it's an 8 a.m. start, 10 to 8. I don't say this to them, I just expect it. Turn up at 10 past eight, I'm gonna be in a pretty foul mood with you for the rest of the day. If we start at eight, you need to be turning up before eight, ready to start at eight, not turning up at eight going, well, I'll start in a bit, or turning up at 10 past eight going, traffic was bad. You know, these things here, they really rile me up. If we've got an eight o'clock shoot, you can guarantee I'm on set at six in the morning, mostly just to sort of calm myself down whilst pro-caffeinating, um, which is the process I go through. I drink a litre of coffee before shooting, um, which then results in anxiety. You can see I've had a litre already today, hence the fast talking. So punctuality is key. The next thing is doing tasks exactly how I say. There is often a reason and I don't have time to explain. I don't want to have to go, yeah, no, do it the way I said, because of X, Y, and Z, or them go, what about if we do it this way? I don't want any of that dialogue going on. If you think you know a better way and you can do it a better way, do it as long as I don't have to know about it. The whole aim is to relieve stress and reduce stress. And the problem with having multiple assistants on a shoot is when they start debating between them. So I have a very simple rule, which is do as I say. And I know it sounds very dictatorship, very mercenary, but when there's tens of thousands of pounds a day going into a shoot, you really can't afford to mess things up. It has to be done properly. I've got a million and one things going through my head. I'm trying to just focus on the shooting so I'm not open to debating things. Now, there are other things that I need the assistant to be able to do. One is make coffee. Two is to be able to order food for the entire crew and collect it. Now, this sounds simple, but some people just can't do that sort of thing. You know, taking a coffee order for 15 people and their lunch order, making sure lunch is on time, it's correct, everyone gets the right food. All those things are important. Making sure the kit's put away properly, the cables are well managed, cables on the floor are covered and taped. All those little things. If we're running behind the scenes footage and they're in charge of batteries of time lapses, making sure the time lapses don't run out. Now, what they don't need to worry about is the actual shooting itself. I'll have a digital tech looking at the screen. They'll be in charge of going, Scott, your sharpness is off. You've back focused, you're front focused. You're clipping a highlight on the left. You need to reduce the light or we need to up every other light apart from that one and up the exposure, whatever it could be. They don't need to do that and they really shouldn't be going, what about this? How about if we do this? Do you think it'd be a good idea to do this? And yes, they might have a good idea, but it's not worth the risk for when they say something like that and it's a bad idea, but the client think it's a good idea or we've got time constraints or budget constraints, whatever it may be, chances are I've already thought of it. And yes, sometimes I haven't and sometimes it is a good idea, but best just to pipe down until you've been assisting someone for a couple of years and you know when it's a good idea to say something or when you know that they've missed something because they wouldn't miss it normally. So being an assistant's brutal. It's long days. It is, you're the lowest paid member of staff, as it were. Yes, I pay a good wage to my assistants, but you're still the lowest paid. And because of that, there's certain things you're not expected to do. You don't have to buy the first round. You don't have to pay for lunch. All these little bits, it's made to be as, as easy as possible in that sense. But you do need to do things like take the bins out, mop and hoover the floor whilst we're doing the backup at the end of the day. All those you know, very arduous, boring tasks. Now, 
as I said at the start, this is not a learn on the job thing. However, it is a great way to learn because most people won't get the option to work with a producer, a creative director, and having a, a stylist, a prop stylist, a home economist, a digital technician, a retoucher, a lighting assistant, all these different people on set, they won't normally get that opportunity at the beginning. So it's good to be able to see that so that when you do get to that point in your career, you understand how things work, who orders lunch, how often to offer a coffee, little things like that, which perhaps if you've always been a freelance, you wouldn't be in that world where you go, do you know what? We should be offering a coffee every X amount of time. We should be offering to get certain things for them. We should be making sure that they can set up their own playlist and have it played through the studio. So they've got their favorite music on when they're on set. They've got the favorite food here, the favorite snacks, you know, all allergens are taken care of, little things like that. Some of that comes down to the producer on certain shoots, but on a smaller shoot, especially a small food shoot, it's often down to the assistant to manage those things and to take that burden off me so I can focus on getting the photograph right. So you're probably sitting there going, great, well, I have no experience, but I want that experience. You're wearing some employ someone who doesn't know what they're doing. How do I get to that point? And you have to start with baby steps and you have to slightly blag your way as well. Nobody has done the next job before they've done the next job, but you have to make the person think you have done that job. So for example, you might start off shooting some very small stuff. Then you might go and assist a slightly bigger local photographer for a year. Then you might go and shoot what that photographer was doing until you're good enough at it. And you might be assisting a slightly bigger photographer for a while. And it's baby steps and baby steps. And when they go, have you ever worked in a commercial campaign before? You might say yes, when really you shot for the local sofa store, don't know where that's come from. Um, and you know, you go, yeah, I understand this, I understand that. And there's a slight amount of when you first turn up, you don't know everything. But what I personally wouldn't be looking for is somebody who's never assisted on a set because it's just so much stress to deal with. So I hope this answers some of your questions. And before I forget, I'm going to go through some of the, the ways to contact photographers to sort of get into these roles because I do YouTube as well. Now, my YouTube stuff is only, I do it every other weekend. I, I batch film. I'm here all day with the same haircut and shirt. You'll see a load of videos going out. I'm going to have a haircut in between these videos going out. So it's going to look weird between Instagram and this. But because of this, I receive an obscene amount of emails. I also start to receive an obscene amount of phone calls. So if you email me, if you phone me, you know, chances are you're going to slip through the net. So what you need to do is just do something different to stand out. That doesn't mean turn up at my door. Please don't turn up at my door. I get really annoyed when people turn up here. But you need to put that effort in. Sending me a DM randomly, can I come and assist you? I open it and I double tap on it to say like, say I've said, seen it, and then I move on. So you do need to put that effort in because there are so many people wanting to assist because obviously assisting... Hang on, Moggy. Moggy, don't eat the plant. There are so many people assisting and wanting to assist that it's, it's a competitive role because it is the way that you learn to do the higher end jobs. You also... This is very important, isn't it, Moggy? You have to be good with the cats because my cat comes to work with me every day. So if you want to come and work here, you've got to be pro Moggy and not have an allergy. See you next time. All good?